Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mystery Media tutorial, we'll be taking a look at how to do a long shadow or infinite shadow type effect inside of the Fusion module of DaVinci Resolve. This is handy for a bunch of different motion graphics projects. You'll see this all over the place. So, inside Resolve, the first thing we'll do is we'll create a color generator by going up to our effects library, and right now we're in the edit part of our page. So, generators and solid color, and this is just so we can create a empty Fusion composition. We'll make this a compound clip. We'll call this Tut for tutorial. And we'll go into Fusion. And now you see we've got our media in, media out, and we are ready to go. So we'll first do this on some text. So we'll drop down a text plus node. And we'll just type something cool in here like Shadow. And we'll go ahead and bring this up on this window just by hitting 1 on our keyboard. We can scale this up some. And we'll make this all caps just so it looks a little more designy. All right, so now the next thing that we're gonna do is sort of the main part of this effect and then the rest of it is just making it look good. So we're gonna drop down a light rays node. If we view this, you see now we're getting something that looks like the opposite of a shadow. It's, it's a light ray, but we can make it look like a shadow. So the things we're gonna want for this, are we going to want this to view light rays alone? We want this to be from bright regions and we'll set our source threshold all the way down to zero, just in case we make our text a darker color, like you know, maybe something like that. Then you can see if we bring our threshold up, we lose it, so just bring it all the way down. So we've always got a shadow, and we'll change the ray direction from a location to at an angle. And you see now, we get an infinite fall off here, so it's uh, it never spreads out, which is what that means. So sort of like the sun, when you see a shadow, it doesn't really expand. But if you put a light bulb next to something, you see the shadow sort of gets wider as it gets further away. And now we will set our length all the way up to one. Just we have a go off screen. You see, now we're getting some problems here is the shadow is a little bit disappearing. But we'll be able to fix that. So we'll bring our brightness all the way up. And that fixes it a little bit. Keep the color at white. And we'll move on to the next part of this. And that is changing this into a bitmap. So... And this will just help us access our stuff a little bit better because the way that light rays works, it's not meant to be a shadow. It's meant to be a light. So we'll pipe this into our bitmap and we'll bring this up on our viewer. And you see right now, this is not what we want. This has nothing to do with our light rays. But we're going to change what we're taking the bitmap from, from the alpha, and just change this to luminance. And now you can see we get these as an image. And the next thing we we'll want to do, see right now, these are still um, white light rays. And, and shadows aren't white. They're darker than white. So we'll invert this, and now we get darker than white shadows. Um, but these are like streaky, and we don't want that. So that's what the next node is going to be for. We're going to add down a curves and drop that in there. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to add a point, and we're going to set the in, which is the x-axis, to 0.99. You see that shoves it up all the way to the edge of the graph there, but not all the way there. And we can put our out to zero. And now what this does is if we view it and we change our bitmap so it's actually going into the image input. See now that makes it black. And you have to do it this way. You can't do it, you can't do it by just bringing your first point in because you see if we make this in 0.99, it looks the same, but if we hover our mouse over it, if you look down in this part of the screen, you see we're getting negative values, and that's not going to work out. That'll make our shadows all streaky if we try to fade out the opacity. So we'll go make this one back to zero like it was. And we'll add another point just like we did before. The in, 0.99. And the out, zero. It's 0.999. Lots of nines. And that just clips the values at the bottom. So now you see these are all zeros down here, which is exactly what we want. Now the next thing we need to do is if we view our alpha channel, we can go up to this guy and select alpha. You see you're still getting an alpha, which is not what we want. Also, you can hit C to go back to color, A for alpha, R for red, G for green, B for blue, A for alpha. You see it's just this little symbol up here that's changing. And you can just double tap that letter to go back to where you were before. So A for alpha. A again to go back to color. And you see we've got an alpha channel here and we don't want that. So we'll just remove that by adding in a channel booleans. And we'll go to alpha 
do nothing. And we're going to want a background behind that. So we'll drop this in. And we'll hit Control-T to switch these. So our background is our actual background. And if we view our channel booleans, you see we're getting it good to go. And now if we hit A over here, you see we have no more alpha channel. So now we've basically got our shadow the way we want it. So we can just merge these two back together. So add down a background. We'll make this just some fun color. And we'll merge these two. And if we view that, hit Control T. Now you can see our shadow is overriding it. So we need to change this to multiply. Now it's multiplying our shadow over top. And you can see if we want to, we can always change our blend. And since we did that curves before, you can see we get it to fade out. So once again, let's add in another curves here, just so I can show you what we were talking about. Because Fusion operates, Fusion and just Resolve in general operates at a floating point. You can get these funny little errors. So it's good to know how to clip values when you need them clipped. So if we just bring this all the way in, you see, even though we faded it out, we're getting these streaky shadows. So maybe you want that, but I don't want that. So we've got these back in here. Drag that back in. Nice. So now that's looking good. And now we can just composite our text over top of this. So drag this in over here and we'll get another merge node happening. And now we've got our stuff over top of this. I think we've got some softness on our light rays. So yeah, we'll bring this down to zero. Zero. And now it hugs that very nicely. So you can, of course, change your angle around. It will update with whatever you put in there. So if you put Theo, you see it updates right away. Very nice. You can use anything you want with this. So I'll alt click here to create a router node. And that will just make it a little bit easier to pop other stuff in here. So if we wanted to just drop down like a circle and put that in there, you see now we've got the infinite shadow on a circle. So it'll work with whatever you throw at it. It, it detects the alpha of the source. So you can, of course, do it with luminance too if you want for some reason. But here you've got, you know, your nice thing. So now you've got this, this cool looking guy. Very simple. Nice little effect. But anyway, there you've got it. A nice, simple way. Well, relatively simple to make some long shadows. It's nice and works with most things. I'll wrap this up into a macro and put it on my site. There'll be a free version and there's one where you can pay what you want. If you use this in a project and you say, hey, Theo saved me a couple minutes, I'll shoot him a couple bucks. That's always appreciated. But, you know, of course, there is no obligation to do that. So I haven't made the macro yet, so I won't show you the controls because I haven't figured them out. But, you know, it'll be simple things like length and opacity and, and stuff like that and angle. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Mr. Media YouTube channel. And if you want even more goodness, check out mistermedia.com slash products where this macro will be, along with a bunch of other good stuff that helps you make your videos faster, easier, better, quicker, etc., which is always nice. And if I haven't said it already, be sure to leave your feelings down in the comments below especially other tutorials that you want to see because I always need ideas. This was on my backup list of things that I should make a tutorial on when I run out of ideas. So once again, I've been Thee with Meester Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye. All right, back rocking and rolling here. We'll walk through the macro. Just got done making it. It's pretty simple. It's called Long Shadow on MeesterMedia.com slash products for free or if you want to donate some money, you know, always appreciated. So we're just taking the input of our text here. And what we'll do is, actually, let me we'll just do this all from the beginning. So just ignore the tutorial stuff here out to the side. So we'll take the input from our text. And this goes into our Long Shadow. And you see we get this black and white output which is just lovely. And now what we can do is we can multiply this on top of a background and control T and so go over and multiply and then we can go back and put our text back on top of that with another merge. So this merge coming out into the background 
text goes into the foreground. And if we view this, nice. Now we've got our stuff. We can, of course, change our opacity here. Bring this down in our long shadow macro. We just got a couple controls. We've got angle and we've got length. And I also added this um, operator radius, which I should change to be something like alpha shrink because because you can see if we go ahead and make this zero, then we get a little bit of extra stuff out there. But if we shrink it in some, then our shadow looks a little bit nicer. So there's that, nice and simple. Once again, mistymedia.com slash products. Check it out, or don't, whatever you want. Uh, we don't have a, a good ending for these these addendums, so bye.